Okay, so there is so much to talk about. It's been a few days since I provided you with any update on SoFi. Rightfully so, because I was waiting to bring some good news or I would say something good to share. I have an info packed video today, so make sure that you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and also comment on the video so we can go out to more SoFi lovers. In the past few days, there are a few things that has happened. Now, some of them are bullish and some of them are even better. I have decided to stop being all negative about the market and show you, at least try to show you some sun in this cloudy weather. We know what market conditions we are in. We know where we are headed. And if you have any doubts, then check out my last video I made and it'll make things very clear for, at least for me, it did make very, things very clear. I'll also link that video towards the end of this video so you can take a look at it. So in this video, I'll give you the good news, the bullish things and how we all are going to have multi-million dollars by following Mr. Oliver and trading with him. Okay, I'm just kidding. Because I see those spam comments about how they woke up with 100K in their account. Don't fall for that. Avoid the spam. It's ridiculous. I mean, there's so much going on. I mean, I'm like, come on, guys. Like, how? who is falling for this? Really, who is falling for this? If somebody who is in finance and watching this channel and smart enough to invest and to take care of their portfolios, nobody's falling for it. So please don't, <laughs> okay? Okay, so now coming back to SoFi and why this is looking good. And let me share the chart. But before, let me share an article with you that I read on Wall Street Journal. Actually, let me grab the paper. Okay, yes, here it is. Okay, so this is the article. And before you make fun of it, I'm old school and I still read newspaper or I still read newspaper in paper. So this is the article that I wanted to bring it to your attention. If you can just see it, Investors Spot Bargain Among Small Caps. So this was a very interesting article where they talk about how investors are basically they are looking at bargains in the small cap sector. Things have drawn or dropped drastically. Now, small cap sector went up 24 percent from January or from November, actually, while S&P went down like 17 percent or 18 percent. So small cap always get hammered a lot more uh, as compared to S&P. And now they're talking about how the trend is shifting. That means more and more large cap companies are getting affected by the market conditions. But small cap has already been hit so much that they're saying that more downside for small cap is limited as compared to large cap. So what it means is, or what article is basically saying is that, that we might see the whole market go down. Yes, in the, in the coming days, that's what, you know, I'm looking at the chart and that's what I'm seeing. But what they're talking about is that S&P will or large cap will fall harder as compared to small cap because small cap has already been punished so much. Some of the stocks are like 70% down. And what is the probability of them going 100% down? Very less. But there are some large cap, which is down 10% that can go down another 20%. So I feel like, you know, they're trying to compare numbers to numbers and they're saying that how uh, there is some bargains in small cap. Okay, so now we have, you know, they're talking about Abercrombie and Fitch, they're talking about Shake Shack, they're talking about Biocyst or Biocrist Pharmaceutical, Customer Bank Corp. They're talking about all these small cap stocks that have been like really hit hard uh, in this. And this is very interesting because the shift that we are seeing or the shift that I noticed in the last few days is that the large caps are now feeling the burn or feeling the effect of this of the stock market uh, rallies or small, small, uh, stock market sell-off. In previous days, when we have a stock market sell-off, the small caps will really, really go down and, and large cap will only go down maybe like say 3%, 4%. Now on any sell-off day, large cap also comes down like 3-4% like this. I mean like, you know, and if it's a major sell-off day, they're down sometimes 10%. I mean, how many days, like in just last few days, Tesla has been down like 7%, 8%, 10%. And, and Apple has been down like 6%, 5%. So before we won't see that. Before we would see, okay, SoFi is down like 20% while Apple is down like 1%. But that, that gap is now being reduced. Okay, so now let me share a few important pieces of uh, basically news and also some buying. And then I will share the chart and some support, trend and resistance. So now quickly, let me share this so you can see. Okay, so this is SoFi. I'm going to move the mic on the side. Okay, 
This is SoFi's company activity in the last few days. And as you can see over here, we have some buying that took place in different, I would say, institutional or by different ETFs and by different institutional investors. We have uh, Fidelity MSCI Financial Index ETF at about 205,000 shares. We have iShares MSCI Small Cap around 95,000. It's a new position. And then we have MSCI Word. Um, we have initiated new position of 228. And then we have this another firm that increased by 229 percent so there are few i would say institutions that came out as er, as early as 6 1 june 1st and then 531 531 and then 513 who started the position but then if you just look at these numbers it kind of make you or, or makes bullish right okay this is good there that means the institutions are buying but look the same share over here it says i share core msci world uci ts etf which is like right here as you can see they are basically sold their position on 531 for 372 357 and then they initiated a new position for 228 so net was still less and and net was still less because this is the rebalance you know towards the end of the quarter towards the end of the month they come out and that's why we see this huge volume on like the 31st and i even mentioned that a lot of etfs have to rebalance a lot of ETFs have to sell and they have to go. They have to basically uh, try and, and, and try to get another, um, I would say, in the another fund, they have to try and get the same stock because if they're trying to rebalance. So that took place a lot uh, at the end of the month. But there were a few new positions that was opened in SoFi, which was, of course, interesting. Along with that, take a look over here. So insiders have been buying a lot. And I, you know, the interview that I had with Tom Nash, we talked about that how interview or how insiders, uh, when they are being granted, because my question was that in Palantir, why are insiders not buying if the prices are so good? And one of the reasoning that I had was that, and, and it was my saying that because if the insider are being granted, if you're granted like say 100,000 shares tomorrow, why would you want to come out and buy another 100,000 shares from your own money when you know that you're going to get granted 100,000 shares? But this is not what's happening with SoFi. And that's why I feel SoFi is a better buy where we are right now as compared to Palantir. That's my opinion because I feel that insiders are really, really putting a lot of buying into this into this stock and i'll share the the graph as well that makes things very clear but take a look over here so on 526 we have the see that 49154 right here shares by anthony noto right here and then 61 we have about 21215 shares now the 49154 shares that you see over here is basically nothing but more so of uh not exercise but yeah i would say exercise of options basically anthony noto was given these shares on 526 about 101,663 shares he was given um, by the company and he basically have to pay taxes so he sold right away he sold 52509 shares right here and that's why his net buy was 49,154 that was may 26th then on June 1st, he comes out and he buys from open market purchase. This is not a, a options grant that they're giving. No, this is an open market purchase of about 21,215 shares. So he comes out and buys 21,000 shares in open market as compared to just four days ago, five days ago, he received about 101,000 shares and then he paid the taxes on 52. So he gained about, or he netted about 49,154 shares. So if you look at this, this tells you that even though he is being given these stocks or he has been given these shares, he is still bullish enough or he still likes where the price is right now, what the company is doing right now, that he's basically coming out and buying in an open market purchase right here on the 21,000 share. He didn't need it to, but of course he has the money. He makes a lot of money. So this is nothing for him just to be, just to be clear. But it shows the strength of insiders basically paying attention to what the company is doing internally and coming out and getting the same deal as you and I are getting if you were to buy the stock in the open market. Now, take a look over here. So this I have shared with you in the past, but look how much buying activity has been taking place in SoFi all the way since February. February, March, April, May, we don't have a single sell. The sell that we have is basically to cover the options. Other than that, it's all net buys. That means basically people are buying. 
this is really really bullish you know if you really look from the company's point of view right i mean all the insiders are coming out and grabbing as much stock as they can because they know the prices are really cool really good where they are right now so again these are the stats and data that's available to us and what's available to us is what we can analyze what we can see and what i can share with you all i mean nobody can tell what brings tomorrow and that brings me to our next topic which is the chart let me share the chart with you all so this is the chart right here um, as you can see of SoFi I'm gonna go to the camera as well so if you see over here we have this a daily chart of SoFi that I have drawn and I have some um, of course support and resistance that I've drawn I have it this trend line this purple line that you see running across here and one thing that I'm seeing here which is not looking good to me and I you know I, I will share as I see it is that the volume on the stock is cooling off and when the volume cools off like this and I will draw a line over here so if you see over here let me actually make it yellow by the way this is Mumu that I'm using so if you like uh, to get a few free stocks I have the link in the description definitely take advantage of that and I didn't mean to do that um, it uh, I didn't need to do that again um, this is, is really a good app I really like like doing TA on this because it's everything is like on your fingertips okay so take a look at the volume over here so see this what's going on here so I would say starting um, I'm going to go starting like May 11th we saw this the surge in the volume and then after that I'm seeing the trend of volume just coming down and as we saw after May 11th, the price went up and we actually touched this yellow is the top part of the Bollinger Band and we saw the top part of the Bollinger Band and then it came down and it touched our trend line right on spot on, on May 20th and then after that it started to take a hike, a hike up. And then after that, now what I'm seeing is that we have volume that's coming down. The trend of the volume is coming down, which I don't like to see. Because if the volume come down, that means people are more and more out and, and, and they are selling and there is a weakness in the price. And if it continues for another, I would say three, four days in this direction, then we can see this price come down to our trend line, which is going to be around $6 and, and $6.50. Again, as if you look at the future of the company, these are some great prices, in my opinion. But of course, as shareholders, we don't want prices to go down like this, right? We want prices to maintain where it is right now in these market conditions and get up or go up in the coming months. But as I said, I've shared in my previous videos and we just got the news this morning from Tesla. I'm gonna make another video on that, that Elon Musk has in an internal email has said to hire or freeze hiring and also uh, basically reduce their workforce by 10%. That's a massive news coming out of a company like Tesla, who is on that S-curve that I have spoken many times about. So I'm gonna talk about that and, and again, share what I think about the Tesla stock and where I see the future of it in the coming days. But this, what I'm seeing right now for SoFi, coming back to SoFi, the volume on the stock uh, or is, is, is going down in the, in the wrong direction. And when we see a red candle, which is a high volume, that means there is more sell-off. That means following day will lead into a, a lower volume. So there are multiple things that can happen. Once we go into, um, I would say, as we go, actually, let me just change this. Okay, so as we go into Q2, now, Q2 numbers will start to come out and some companies will actually do better in, in, in Q1 because remember, Q1 is always slow period for all the economies or I would say for all the sectors, not the economies, but for all the sectors. And as we get into Q2, we are going to see better earnings from some of the company which is going to give the boost. And also don't forget, Amazon stock split happening on June 6th Google happening in July, Tesla, we don't know the exact date, but most likely July, August, we don't know that. So those things should give some fresh air into the market. The CPI number comes out June 10th, I think, and FOMC comes out on June 15th. So I have mentioned in my previous videos that the next three weeks, when we see the June, I would say second week or third week, are going to be very critical for the stock market and that will be the time for me to basically buy 
so if I buy maybe Tesla, buy uh, Google, Apple, Amazon, those are the things. I'll see what the charts are telling me at that time. To buy these stocks and basically put my money back into the market, I have some money on the sideline, as I've mentioned to you in the past, and I'm not right now investing anything because I feel like we are seeing, we are going to see some, some downward pressure. And see, the stock market is not constant, right? Things are always, always changing in the stock market. And I always have mentioned that, you know, okay, in June mid is what I feel that I should buy. But if the things change in, in, in middle of June, and if we come out with some negative report where we see the slowdown in GDP or the CPI comes bad, which I don't think it will, but if it comes bad, or if FOMC comes out and, and gets more hawkish in market turns, I might wait longer. Nobody's putting a gun to my head to go and, and, and buy stocks. And, and that's the reason why I always say that, you know, you don't have to buy today. You're not going to miss the boat by buying today. You can buy tomorrow. Yeah, you might not get, catch the absolute bottom, but who cares if you're looking? If your horizon is next five to 10 years, then who really cares about if you buy the stock at, like, say, $100 or $110 or $120? Because those are, yeah, if you look at the percentage point of view, yeah, you were, you would have made 10% more. But right now, the smart investor, in my opinion, is the one who waits and who doesn't jump just on a single bounce or a single drop. And that's why DCA is, is one of the best strategy you can have for your portfolio. Again, my two cents on where I've seen the market go and what I've learned from the market in the last few months, you know. Okay, so I hope I provided some value. And if you like the video, then definitely subscribe and hit the like button as well. It helps a lot to take the video to other investors and also to grow the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like free stocks, I have provided the link to Mumu. Definitely take advantage of that. And also, if you like to talk to like-minded individuals, we have some amazing members in our Discord and Patreon. Definitely join that. The links are in the description below. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, you all have a sparkling day.